Hello everybody, today I'm going to be showing you four different programs that I've made since the last video I put out. Um, I won't really be explaining how I made them or why or the significance of any of these programs uh, just because I don't think a lot of my audience so far uh, cares, or cares or are math or science enthusiasts. Uh, so I'm just going to try and make them short and sweet and I'm actually, this is probably going to be my first edited video which I'm going to put on YouTube. So uh, enjoy. Everybody, okay, wait, so here we go. This is the first program I'll be showing you. Um, it's already evolved a little bit, but this is uh, my end body simulation. So there are 8,000 particles, and I said I wouldn't explain the significance, but what's interesting about this is that I added a balancing outward push force so that the whole thing doesn't just collapse into a ball, and that way it makes more... Um, clumps everywhere and they don't everything doesn't just collapse into one big ball in the middle which I thought would make things a little bit more interesting so uh, there you go there's 8,000 particles all going going under the gravity force how about that 3d you know it looks all right not bad there's collisions uh, doesn't really look that great. Well, actually, I think it looks pretty cool. I won't say that. There you go. I'm just going to let you look at that. <laughs> Trying not to do any unnecessary explanations here. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Eventually, everything will just expand. Because if you don't balance the outward push with the inward pull of gravity, then, you know... It just ends up expanding more than it contracts. A lot like the universe, except this expansion isn't accelerating. It's just a constant rate. Anyway, on to the next program. So this time, uh, I actually forgot to show you. This is with uh, slightly different initial starting conditions. It starts off as two clouds of particles with... Um, a little bit of sideways velocity so that these things orbit each other. Also change the collisions a little bit so that they form uh, nicer balls together. And we can see, sort of like a black hole merger, probably closer to a star, two stars merging. But, um, you know, you can see that when they get close to each other, they kind of stretch. And they're going to come back. I got rid of the outpush as well so that they don't... Um, they're not repelling each other or anything. The outpush actually just is basically expands space so that uh, everything doesn't just collapse into one big ball. But in this case, I'm totally cool with that. I'm trying to make a galaxy shape, so just take some patience here. It's running at about 48 frames per second right now with the screen recording. And there we go. We got our somewhat galac galactical shape. And it ends up making just sort of like a little disc. So how about that little little program I made? Yeah. And I have one more highlight, which I'll just edit in real quick, um, of when before I had uh, I changed the physics of basically an earlier version, but there was actually some pretty cool uh, behavior. So I'll show that off too. So you got these little particles, they look like squares. I used uh, GL points to do that. OpenGL has that as a feature. Here's my favorite part of the simulation, that's why I saved the parameters, um, like the random seed. But it kind of throws off a planet there, and that's pretty great. So here we are with the next program I'm going to show you. It's, I guess you could say it's similar to the gravity program, not really though, because they're not attracted to each other by gravity. And because of that, I can take advantage of some other things. And this program is actually running on the CPU. And it's basically just a bunch of uh, ball collisions in two dimensions. There is really nothing to it. But it does look very pretty. And it did, I did implement it in a sort of uh, clever way, which I ripped off the YouTuber Muzka. Maybe I'll link his uh, channel in the description because he also makes... A lot of great C++ SFML projects. Um, yeah, so basically there's a bunch of these balls, and uh, 
it's doing a lot fewer collision checks than it would need to if it was doing every single ball and checking with every other single ball. Instead, each ball is only checking in the vicinity for collisions, which means that instead of doing uh, 4 million collision checks, which is like the most amount that you'd ever need to do, then it's actually only doing 55,000 right now. And there's 2,000 balls right now, 2,000 particles. So yeah, you can turn on gravity like this. Woo! I showed this to my dad and he was like, why does it look like a fluid? And I'm like, well, isn't that kind of what fluid is? It's a bunch of particles. And I'll turn off the gravity. Boing! It's kind of springy. Also, they changed colors a little bit, which I also ripped off some other guy. I just saw his video, you know, I didn't copy his code or anything, but I saw his video and I was like, I'm going to make that. So, that's, <laughs> I decided to make it. This one's actually a little bit more interactive. You can click click and pull them around. They get attracted to my, to my mouse to some extent. And then turn on gravity. How about that? Looks pretty nice, if you ask me. Not bad. Alright, you know what? It's time for the next goddamn video. I mean, program. Whatever. See there. <laughs> Actually, just for fun here, I'm going to show you what this program looks like with no frame rate limiting. The other one, before I had it running at a consistent rate of 60 frames per second, just for, you know, consistency's sake, so that it runs at the constant speed. But this is what it looks like if it just runs at max speed. And we can see it's definitely a little bit more responsive. Wow, look at that. Oh, that's pretty cool, eh? So that's 2,000 particles. Wow. So here's the next program I'm going to show you. Uh, I really would like to make this one more interactive, but you do get to um, set some parameters for how the planet will look like. And it basically is a planet generator. It starts off with a sphere, and it puts some a combination of crater shapes, which go up or down, uh, a combination of those and more like soft uh, lumps like these guys here, and basically just makes a little sphere. The shader, the shader makes it look shiny, but I could change the shader to make it look however I like. I just wanted to make it shiny for fun, um, and it's made out of I don't know how many. Let's see, uh, crater count. I think it, maybe it doesn't really matter, but it's made of quite a few, maybe a few thousand triangles. It, it runs, if I didn't limit the speed to 60 frames per second, it would run at, uh, it would run at, uh, 1,400 frames per second, which is way faster than my frame rate, so I don't really see a point in doing that. But yeah, that's all there is, and I'll just run it one more time and show you what it looks like with different parameters so so this is it with uh, different parameters the parameters you can set basically are um, uh, what's it called you can set the number of craters the number of bumps and the initial seed so if you put in the same parameters you'll get the same planet out but um, it's kind of randomly generated as you can see if two craters happen to overlap it kind of makes that so maybe that's not the most pleasant shape, but I kind of feel like this would be a great asteroid generator for a game, you know, making asteroids. And uh, yeah, there you go. That's that program. So I made this program after seeing, uh, what's it called, Veritasium's latest video on chaos. And, you know, I've seen number file videos on it as well, but... Basically, it's called the logistic map, and it's made by using a very simple function. And what's interesting is that it, you know, it splits off like this into two, and then it splits off into two again, and then it splits off into two again, and then eventually it just turns into total chaos. But there's these little islands of stability, like this big dark band we can see here. Um, and I'm, I mean, what's this? Right, I don't know. So it's kind of like, it's basically a fractal. Apparently this is related to so many things in the real world, like um, uh, like the growth rate of things that are kind of exponential, the growth rate of populations, maybe viruses, 
and the heartbeats of rabbits in cardiac arrest, just like, uh, or fibrillation, <laughs> which is what I learned from uh, Veritasium's video. I think it's pretty amazing that you can use such a simple little function to generate this. The code is only 50, 60 lines, or something like that, and it can generate this. But you can slightly change the uh, the equation to get slightly different looking results. So let's check out what it looks like if we use a different equation. So yeah, you can find something like this if you look up uh, the logistic map and you'll just find a bunch of uh, cool images on Google of stuff like this. And I found a picture that looked something like this and I was like, cool, how'd they make that? Because it's not the standard logistic map that you get. And they added a small term to the um, to the function or whatever, to the equation, so that it took on a different look. And this is what it looks like, which I thought is pretty cool. I'll actually show one more variation of the logistic map to get a different shape, and I think that'll be the end of the video there. And this is the last variation that I'll be showing for this one here. Um, basically, you know, like I said, slightly different equation. It uses sine in this one, but uh, I don't know. I feel like that looks pretty cool too. It's pretty crazy how it goes like this. The other one doesn't go this far up, but it also has this weird sharp straight line here. I don't know if that's more of a problem with how I implemented it or if it's really part of the mathematical part of it, but actually, yeah, no, I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be there. Yeah, that's part of the that's part of the math. This is the shape of such a strange function, right? Weird. All right. Well, that's the end of that program. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. And uh, comment, like, and subscribe. Well, you know, maybe you could subscribe just so you could come back later and check out more of my stuff. I'm really proud of it. I'd like to show you more. And like I said, if you ever have any questions about any of this stuff, I don't know if I said it. If you do have any questions about some of the stuff that I've made here, go ahead and ask in the comments and I'll be glad to make a video or respond to your comment. Uh, there you go. And uh, have a good one.